Before we begin, I'm happy to announce the release of my newest book, Conscious Conduit, A Dowser's Guide to the Business of Ascension. This book is a new addition to my first book released in 2018. In this revised and expanded edition, I go into more detail about how you can use dowsing to expand your own consciousness, improve your life, and how to turn your dowsing hobby into a thriving business. The book is available in print or ebook form and retails for only $9.99. I'll be bringing copies with me whenever I make personal appearances, but you can get your own copy today at Amazon.com. And now for today's podcast. Welcome to High Vibes with your host, Bill G. At High Vibes, we're looking into what it means to be a fourth dimensional being in an ever changing world. We hope that by listening to our podcast, you can feel a greater sense of peace and connection as we collectively raise our energetic vibration to the next level. And now for today's podcast. Hello and welcome to Hi Vibe. I'm Bill G and I'm here with Nina today. And on today's show, we're going to be discussing the time temple charts, which is a, a system of Akashic dowsing that Nina and I made together a couple of years ago. And I've been using it regularly with my clients and I also teach it in workshops. And so there's a lot of people out there who know how to use the time temple charts as well as I do. So how it works is that we use the pendulum and this particular chart to find a coordinate in space time. And that coordinate is telling you what it is, what you are going through in this moment. And then it also tells you what is on the periphery of your awareness and that things that you need to pay attention to. And so there's a combination of different things in the charts. We've got we've got past life stuff in here. We've got archetypes in here. We've got Chinese cosmology. We've got the law of one. So there's a lot of stuff that is incorporates into the overall philosophy and interpretation of the charts, all designed to tell you where you are right now and where your high self is trying to guide you to where you're going next. So the time temple charts are always evolving. Every time we do more research or we are run into any kind of limitation to the charts. We are constantly doing new research, new ideas come in, and we incorporate those into our charts. And then we tell you about it because it's very exciting for us to, to tell you about it. And we think that it will help you in your quest to expand your consciousness and have a better life. And that's what we're all about. So recently, clients of Bill's here have been coming in and they've been needing something more. And right after this started happening, we discovered biogeometry and biogeometry signatures. And where we discovered that was at the American Society of Dowsers National Convention. We got to talking to some people, in particular, uh, Marty Lucas, and we were also talking with Aaron Singleton. And these are um, dowsers who are absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant these, these guys really understand biogeometry at a level that that we're nowhere near yet but what they told us turned us on to some additional research yeah and, so we've been reading a few books by ibrahim karim who works with biogeometry signatures and in fact he harkens back to a team who worked in egypt in the pyramids using the energies of radiesthesia. And radiesthesia is this ability to detect radiation from any number of things. It could be a person, a place, a ley line, a volcano. It doesn't really matter. But they can use a pendulum or a pendulum and a simple machine. And when you think about it, radiation is just a form of light. And the Time temple charts utilize light in order to find those coordinates in space time. And then we learn from them and we learn about ourselves in the process. 
Now, what we did is we took the visible light spectrum, which is what the basis of the charts have been up till now. Right, because and- your now is everything that you experience and see out in the world. However, there's more to that. And the what's more to that is the invisible light spectrum, that which we don't see. And so when you think about it, the visible light spectrum is what we see in our world and what we can be aware of. And like even when you've got something in the periphery of your awareness, you can see, still see it. It's still within your vision. What we wanted to find out is how we can figure out what is unseen but still within our awareness because we have a higher awareness that goes into radionics and going into radiesthesia that still exists within us because we are all energy and we have an energy field around us that can be tuned into these different things. And if those things have an emotional component or they have a past life component or a life component we want to be able to read that and be able to help you uh, discover that on your own. And putting these different light signatures into our charts has really opened up a whole new world of precision. Absolutely. It's like when I started using the charts two years ago, when we were just using the visible light spectrum, I was blown away at how accurate they were. And now that we've incorporated the invisible light spectrum into it, it's like the charts are telling me this is what we were meant to do all along. Now, why didn't it show it to us before and why is it showing it to us now? It's because our now changed. And that's something we always have to keep in mind, too, whenever we're doing this kind of work. Just because you are doing clearing work or you are doing a dowsing or Akashic dowsing, and you're like, okay, I've got that licked. I've got it that figured out. That's great for that moment, for that now. There's going to be another now where you're going to need a deeper tool. You're going to constantly need to be going deeper and deeper because we have a lot of crap we need to clear out of our subconscious if we are to expand our consciousness to the next level. So if you think of the chart as a circle or a clock, because that'll give you a better idea of what we're talking about here, right at high noon is green. And at nine o'clock is your red. And at three o'clock is violet. And so we're talking about the upper half here is your visible light spectrum. In your invisible light spectrum, Six o'clock at the very bottom is your negative green, and then we have various other coordinates below that. And what do what do all the coordinates kind of mean here for us? Negative green itself is exact the exact opposite of where green is on the clock. And it where green is your now moment, negative green is the carrier of the now. And it's also the destructive and the creative force or the foundation of your now moment. In many of the power centers of the world, negative green can be found along with two other carrier energies. And put all together, those three energies are really very positive and very, very healing. You can heal in a very short amount of time in a very dramatic way. However, negative green on its own can be extremely destructive and has actually been known to kill people. (laughs) But we're not going to be killing anybody. No, no, there's none of that happening here. But we are using it to see where our now is being carried in. Right. And And how it is being carried in. Is it being carried in by something less positive or... Something negative or something. Or it could even be carried in with something very positive. But ultimately, we have to see this as kind of a double-edged sword whenever it comes up on the charts. It's something that is creative and destructive at the same time, kind of like Shiva the Destroyer, who is creative and destructive at the same time. You know, we do live in very dualistic space. So to just have our visible light spectrum kind of didn't make some sense, you know? Right. (laughs) Um, To have this other side 
that is unseen, kind of like the yin to the yang, is very interesting. So what does, do the different colors mean? Well, if we're going to concentrate, first of all, on the visible light spectrum, because that's something where we can all relate to, your lemon through turquoise is your now moment or that which you are mostly aware of. That's what you're looping all the time. If you look out into the world, you even look around the room that you're in right now. What is the dominant color palette? I bet you that your dominant color palette is probably lemon through turquoise. If you go out into nature, your dominant color palette palette is lemon through turquoise. You've got a yellow, you've got a like a lemon sun, you've got green plants, you've got turquoise, turquoise water, ocean. turquoise yeah. ocean, turquoise <laughs> water, the tur turquoise sky. If you go into the blue through violet, those vibrate at a slower rate. And these are things that are on the periphery of your awareness. You don't, they don't necessarily jump out at you. And because they vibrate at a slower rate, these are things that are generally fear related or karmic related. Yeah, or... they've been around for a really, really long time. They tend to be genetic or karmic in nature. And they kind of are like background noise. They're always there. Right. But because you've been listening to them for so long, you don't really hear them anymore. Just like nose blindness to something that, that's in the room, you know, a scent. And then you've got your reds through yellows. And red through yellow is also in the periphery of your awareness. But these are the things that are kind of jumping out at your uh, for your attention. Like um, you go into a, a, a room that is mostly a lemon through turquoise uh, color palette and right in the middle of the room is a bright red vase that thing is screaming for your attention yeah these are your novel experiences and your things that you really do want to pay attention to because if you want to really get in there and change your life up those are the things you want to be able to see so now when we move into the in invisible light spectrum now we get into things that you don't see but they are there nonetheless so if the visible light spectrum is things that we can see, the invisible light spectrum is things we don't see. How do we know they are there? It's because, again, just like the visible light spectrum, they still vibrate at a certain level of radiation. And because we are energetic beings, we are aware of this. For instance, infrared. When infrared comes up in the reading, what we're looking at is a novel action that a person is doing in order to deal with their now moment. So we determine what is their now moment and how am I dealing with this? And so that would come up in the infrared. If black comes up, that vibrates at a slower level than the infrared so this is the emotional foundation this is how i'm feeling about it and that also informs our now movement and then we move into negative green which we already talked about and negative green is that foundational energy that the the destructive and creative energy that is the carrier that brings in the now and then when we we moving more than towards the white the white is your incarnational training. This is what you've this is what you've been training for your whole life, this now moment. So this is your incarnational stuff. This is things, your family programming. This is your career programming. This is how you deal with your now moment within the physical realm. And then finally we get into ultraviolet. Now, ultraviolet is your outward manifestation of your now moment, or it could also be what others are seeing, how you are dealing with your now moment. The infrared, you can say, is probably about four o'clock, black about five, negative green, obviously six. White is about five o'clock, and UV is about four o'clock. So to get an idea of how this all works, we did a uh, a quick reading for Nina. And so, Nina, what was our specific focus on this? We 
Okay, well, I've been doing a whole lot of artwork lately, and I'm getting ready for a show at the beginning of October that I've never, ever done before. I've never done an outdoor show, and that's what this is. Um, so I've, I'm really busy making a lot of stuff, and I'm very, very stressed out. Okay, so what we're trying to read here is what's the source of the stress, and what can she do to alleviate some of that stress or at least put it into conscious context so that way we can get a better idea of what she needs to do moving forward so what came up is it went to the white so white is incarnational training and this is you know this is what you trained to do and that is helping you deal with this now moment so what came up was the um, the archetype of the healer, um, the soul family, the soul community of the student, the soul family of the in-law, and the highest form of forces of light. Now, forces of light is somebody who um, helps to frame reality. An in-law can be an actual physical in-law, but they could also be people whom you want to please, who are like family, but they are, you give them a lot more power than you intend to. A student is someone whom you are trying to teach, or this is, or you are the student here. I am and, definitely the student here. Yes. <laughs> and the healer, and again, again, the healer is your your incarnational training is, and that's what you've basically been doing for the majority of your career, being a healer, doing your quantum research, doing your acupuncture and whatever. So there's a lot of stuff happening here in the incarnational training aspect of it. You know, I got to say something. Everyone calls me a healer, 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 healer. I think that has less to do with acupuncture and all of that and more to do with something more esoteric about what the healer actually bodies and does. So what you're saying here is that are you healing yourself or is it, are you allowing your work here to help heal others? I think it's more like being able to maneuver or being able to augment your physical energies in order to make change in the outside world. Very interesting. So let's take a look at what your now moment is. Your now moment is there's no high form or soul family, but there is a soul community of your ancestors and the dominant life pattern of the writer or the author. So again, are we talking about you writing the great American novel here, but you actually just got done doing a, a coloring book. So you are being the author here. You are, your artwork can be interpreted as writing. You are expressing yourself because that's what writers do. They express themselves. Writing one's, one's path. It, yeah, right. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going well against my training and well against what, you know, everybody really kind of expects of me and what people want me to do. And I'm doing something I really wanted to do my whole life. I'm writing my own future. That's good. So, all right. So, but so it looks like there's some ancestral stuff in there, which I don't like at all. Well, that's something to clear. That's something mm -hmm. to, that's something to cleanse. So, all right. So, so far, how does this make you feel? The understanding that moment. Pretty good. It, it it looks like I'm doing what I want to do. Very good. And there may be some uh, programming coming in that is what is causing the stress. Exactly. Instead of the work itself. And where do we turn to find where that stress is coming from? We turn to the invisible light spectrum, the other coordinates within the visible light, invisible light spectrum. So let's take first a look at our infrared. Our infrared is our that we're, we're trying to do or what we're working on to deal with that present moment. And it came up as religious leader. 
a religious leader is not necessarily somebody who follows a particular faith or some kind of dogmatic belief, but dogma does have something to do with it. And in this particular case, I believe it is focusing on what you are perceiving to be the quote unquote right way to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a somewhat of a bit of control aspect here. Right, because you've been, uh, you're a member of the Creative Powerhouse Society, which is a peer group of people who, who are fellow artists who have been there, done that, and they're teaching each other how to become successful in, in this. And you also have retailers telling you what they expect of you, and you're reading about how to be successful in this. So it's kind of like the novel now thing that you are trying is to try and learn the ropes, learn the rules of the game. That's absolutely true. And that can cause a great deal of stress. Especially since they haven't done an outdoor show before. Right. And, and and we're not just talking about the outdoor show. You're also listed on fair. You're, so you're selling wholesale yeah. and you're selling retail. It's an enormous amount of stress. And there's a right way to do it. And there's a wrong way to do it. And the last thing in the world you want to do is do it wrong because it costs a lot of money. And then you have a lot of wasted time and you want don't want to waste time anymore. You're over 50 years old, damn it. You, it's time for you to get it done and get it done right. But again, when you don't know the rules of the game, you got to learn the rules of the game. And that that is a, a source of stress. Here. And I've been working really hard to get as much right the first time as possible so that I don't have a lot of missteps. So now we're moving on to black. Black is the emotional foundation of the, of the stress that is happening here. And it is the military leader. Now, again, I'm not being too controlling. You are being too controlling. You are marshalling your resources. You are gathering your armies in order to conquer the enemy. And what is the enemy? The enemy is the unknown. Mm. The enemy is, is, will people buy this? And so you are doing everything in your power to bring stuff together, to have the best looking and and most successful booth website everything as possible and it is again a source of stress because here you again you are trying to do it right you've got this religious leader thing saying i want to do it right i want to learn the rules and once i learn the rules you're putting a great deal of your emotional agency into getting it right and that's why it's ending up in the black so let's look at your negative green. Your negative green is the physical scientist. The physical scientist is the person who is um, interested in physics, obviously, but also um, the nature of energy. And isn't this interesting how your stress, the foundation of your stress or the carrier of your stress is the work that you have done with the time temple charts. It is the work that you're doing with biogeometry and all of this. You are using physics to create the life that you want. You are you are working to manipulate the energies, to manipulate the mm. radiation or whatever you want to call it in order to get it right. Learn the rules, marshal your resources, and that includes on the metaphysical as well as the physical level. Lastly, we're going to hit the ultraviolet. The ultraviolet is how you are the outward manifestation or what other people see you doing. And here we have the mathematician. And so others are seeing you working really hard at getting all of this right. But Putting all those pieces into place, you know, Every night I've had dreams of me putting pieces into the right places. Uh -huh. Interesting. And I've been trying to figure out what that meant. And here it is. And a mathematician is also somebody who is generally viewed by their peers as someone who is not particularly a social person. 
somebody who is in their head and oh my gosh you've been accused by so many people lately of just being in your head yeah you know who you are pretty accurate very accurate so what is the what is our next step here our next step here is first of all we have awareness of what is happening now we can put this into purification we can say all right we want to be a successful artist or or maybe not no you know what my original goal for doing all this was just to do something i loved right. and just to do it in a joyful way i was trying to bring as much joy and happiness into my life as i possibly could i wanted to take every little bit out that i possibly could that i didn't enjoy or that you know just wasn't very fulfilling and replace it with all this like love and meaning you know it, and all that only comes from happiness so everything was about happiness and everything was about what i wanted to do instead of what other people expected of me and what ended up happening i took too much control i exerted too much control over the situation so that it's not so joyful and now it's stressful and so what are we going to do about it i want to say that i'm going to try and go back to my original idea and just do art for me and also to keep that in mind just to keep it Re yeah. remember now yes there are stuff you still got to do yes you still got these shows and whatever but yeah but i got to reframe it in a different way reframe it in your mind exactly you reframe it remember it's about the joy when i am seeing clients i sometimes get caught up in their in their stuff and it sometimes brings me down but then i have to remind myself that this is joy for me this is not stress i love talking to people i love elevating myself and so i have to remind myself whenever any of you out there are working on something that is joyful it can easily you know it morphs into something that you never intended to yeah, and then you're so invested in it right you really wanted to work you know work out the way you, you needed to work out and we were always taught that you know you put in the hard work and it comes out and and that's not necessarily so but i think a lot of us have taken all that to heart in our own programming and it becomes part of us so i think what i need to reframe is that it doesn't have to be so hard in order to work out and if this is an experience that you want to have, that's cool, Bill. Please go to our website at www.vitalbioenergetics.com slash book online and book a free 30 minute consult. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you and get an idea of where you are in your life right now. And then we will do our Akashic dowsing. We will figure out what is in your soul record and why you are where you are right now. Almost every client gets a full dose of the Time Temple charts. It works so well with my other charts. And we will get them to the bottom of this. And not only will we get to the bottom of your now moment, we will help you identify now moments that are going to help you have a much, much better life. I feel so much better now. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Thank you for listening. For more information about Bill and Nina G, please go to www.vitalbioenergetics.com. See you next time.